With the expansion of agriculture in the Midwest, natural habitat is disappearing at alarming rates. Water quality is suffering, wildlife is declining, and our pollinators are threatened by a critical loss of forage. This thing that we call pollinators is the single greatest conservation movement of my lifetime. New agricultural practices like monoculture crops have overtaken the landscape in the Midwest and across the country. There's just nothing left. I think we have to think about, well, what can we put back and how, not to take anything away from farm commodities, but to try and get something back for the pollinators. The landscape behind us, I think, is, demonstrates what has happened. The efficiency of farming allows them to, to use more and more cropland, which is fine, except that we need to try to make the pastures to make up for what's lost for all of us, not just the beneficial insects. Every year, 60% of the nation's pollinating honeybees spend their summer months in the upper Midwest and Northern Plains, where they make honey and build strength, which prepares them to pollinate the crops we rely on. We think about the four Ps, parasites, pathogens, pesticides, and poor nutrition. Well, that fourth P, poor nutrition, that's about forage and good habitat on the landscape. Just by planting flowers and making sure that bees have what they need on the landscape can really improve all those other stressors. If we can help curb this bee decline that we're observing across the country, that improves things economically for beekeepers, for small businesses. If we improve it for native bees, that helps that critical component of our ecosystem. You know, plant-pollinator interactions provide that basic framework which allows our ecosystems to exist. Beekeepers have been keeping bees for a hundred years where they have focused entirely on finding habitat. But we've already found all the habitat and it's depleted. So now what we have to do is learn how to create it. We have to invest in it. The Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund was formed by a group of concerned organizations in 2014 out of a a growing sense of frustration that was occurring. And that growing sense of frustration produced this unique partnership that is producing great, significant habitat results. The Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund, through Next Gen Projects, supports a multitude of species and environmental quality issues. The amazing thing about the Bee and Butterfly Habitat Project is that not just honeybees benefit. By putting the right plants in the mix, you can benefit native pollinators, songbirds, game birds, all kinds of wildlife. We're collecting a lot of native bees off of these. We're seeing a lot of honeybees out there foraging. I showed you the pollen, and you see that it appears that those colonies are altering their foraging behavior. That is, they're responding to the habitat that we engineered for them. They're using it. So all those things start to point to, yes, these types of conservation plantings are having an impact on pollinators. So that's pretty exciting to see. I believe that forage, having good forage, is fundamental to honeybee health. That's almost a no-brainer in research. Uh, if bees have good nutrition, they're just so much more resilient to all the different diseases and pests and pesticides that are thrown against them. Having high quality bee habitat is essential for the beekeeping operation that we run. We also pollinate, so we take our bees out to California to pollinate the almonds like, like most of the beekeepers in the United States. And as we're getting our bees ready to, to do that important pollination, uh, they always have to revitalize somehow. And if we don't have good bee habitat for them to make a honey crop, to grow their numbers, to uh, increase their health, we're just not going to have healthy bees. The world's largest pollination event is in California almonds. There's a million acres of almonds that require two million colonies of honeybees to come and pollinate those trees when they bloom in March. That's the dead of winter most places. And just like when you run a marathon, your success and performance is not determined on that day. It's way upstream of that. The bees that are here in Jamestown and in the upper Midwest, what determines their performance for pollination is the summer before. Do they get fat and happy and healthy? Do they make a honey crop? Do they replenish and go through winter successfully? Those things are where the Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund can make a huge difference because it's those pollinating bees that we rely on. After almonds, they go to berries and melons and that is an important part of our quality of life that they pollinate one in three bites of food. 
the Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund was formed with a couple of objectives. One, we want to provide phenomenal pollinator value in our habitat projects like we see right here. And high pollinator value means lots of diversity, lots of different things flowering throughout the whole year, and then the specific types of plants that the pollinators really want. This is Maximilian Sunflower, very robust. Even if grasses come in, this species will hang on. And this, my good friend Wendy might add, is in my opinion, one of the most important plant species to get monarchs to the mountaintop in Mexico. It was interesting to see the different practices and, and, and how different practices or different seed mixtures provide different results on different timelines. I have two kids, one and three, and so, so the benefit of pollinator habitat, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is that it's putting diverse food on the table for my kids. It's putting, putting the proper nutrition that they need on my table and making sure that their upbringing is, is, um, is healthy. Our second objective was to take this project and demonstrate how pollinator habitat can be established in a cost-effective, easy, fast way that provides benefits for weed competition. Each next-gen habitat project has two different practices. One is designed for honeybees and it includes more introduced species and the other is intended to benefit monarch butterflies specifically and it includes more native species. We very specifically called them next-gen habitat projects because this project and this result brings new innovation and new technology to how we design and how we establish and manage this habitat. It's different than how we've been doing pollinator projects before this. And that influences what it costs, the pollinator value that we get out of this, how quickly it establishes, the weed competition, strength, of a mixture like this, this is all new innovation and technology. We like to think that we've built a better mousetrap when it comes to pollinator habitat. Both mixtures actually support native bees and butterflies and honeybees, but specifically those introduced species within the honeybee mixture would outcompete the native species in the butterfly mixture if they were combined. So in order to get the best possible habitat, we're separating that out into different parts of the acreage. So having the, these separate plantings, we're not just focused on honeybee health, we're actually supplying what many organisms need, including, including native pollinators. We see so many bumblebees in these plantings, all kinds of butterfly species, flies, dragonflies. We've just seen so much out here in these plantings. As the Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund, we're not trying to solve every issue, but we're trying to do something that we can get a lot of uh, buy-in from that will have a broad effect. So we're working on the landscape. And beekeepers far and wide are facing the same situation, not just here in North Dakota. Agricultural companies, big and small, are involved in this project because this is a landscape project. And those companies are involved in influencing what happens on the land. And you could say they've been a part of the, the problem. We want them to be a part of the solution as well. You know, we're a large agricultural and chemical company, but stewardship is a large part of our company. And we, we recognize that, you know, we're not just here to sell products. We're also here to be, you know, good stewards and also, you know, really do a lot of good things. And so Syngenta's behind this all the way and, and, the, and, the, and the fact that they've given me this latitude to go all forth and, and work with the different groups has been wonderful. Communication is key in, in every part of this project. Landowners need to understand that investing in habitat is something that they can do without risks or liabilities and that it can be a benefit to their farm. Beekeepers need to realize that investing in habitat is something that they can do to support their bottom line and that can also improve relationships. So beekeepers should get involved and I challenge them because once they have had the opportunity to work with a landowner where habitat is an issue and they correct that, they not only improve the bee's health and their productivity, but they make a partner um, out of a landowner who is now invested in habitat. And that relationship can spawn additional relationships. It can protect the bees when other farming decisions are made on that land. 
because the farmer then realizes that there is, you know, there's something to this. They're not just a bunch of boxes on the property. There's a relationship between the bees and the land and even the food supply. And that happens only with good communication, not from just having bees on a property. Everybody can make a difference. The Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund is bringing innovation and technology to pollinator habitat. Everybody can make a difference by supporting our efforts. Help the Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund by putting more pollinator habitat like this onto the landscape. We need to be expanding the areas that we're working in, and in order for us to expand, we're looking for more people to join our cause. Get involved, support the Bee and Butterfly Habitat Fund so that we can make more projects like this a common everyday occurrence. Get involved. Be a part of our next-gen habitat solutions. Visit beeandbutterflyfund.org and projectapism.org.